Hey, everybody. Welcome to the Well-Dressed Brand TV show. I'm your host, Toy Sweeney. I am so excited about our conversation today, as I am every Friday when we're live uh, here on all the platforms. But today, uh, we might be on limited platforms. <laughs> so today, I want you to welcome in my guest, Andrew uh, Winberg, who is the CEO of... Um, a gorgeous, successful company called the Voice of Influence organization, uh, also the host of the Voice of Influence podcast and the author of Unfrozen, Stop Holding Back and Release the Real You. Um, welcome into the show, friend. How are you today? Thank you for being with us. Oh, Toy, I'm just so glad to be with you. It's always good to see you. So we met because we were both fascination advantage coaches. And I think that during either one of the training sessions or a call or something, um, you know, we had the chance to get to know each other better. And I'm so grateful that through the years, we just became fast friends, right? And so <laughs> we even went to Disney World together. Or Disney, was it land or world? Which one is world, it? World, yeah. <laughs> and so I always cherish that time with you because- it was the first time that I had ever gone trick-or-treating without a child attached to my hip. Um, my son was really upset with me that we went to Mickey's Not So Halloween, Halloween without him. But it was so much fun. So much fun. <laughs> you know, when you work so hard at building your business and trying to understand who you are and what, are, you know, you're doing all these things. I think every once in a while you de deserve a little like you're in Orlando with friends. <laughs> you should go to Disney World just for a few hours. I think it's great. I, I was so glad that you invited me to go and that I said yes, because I'm certainly at a point where and I have been for a few years where I'm trying to invite more fun into my life. Right. And so um, we had such a such a good time. I think I felt like teenagers that night. <laughs> like we like we shared a room it was like you know I don't have any, any hair to braid but if I did we probably would have been you know braiding each other's hair and eating candy and talking about boys <laughs> even though we're past that age in our lives <laughs> well, anyway I'm excited um and thank you again for saying yes because we were having a phone conversation um, and we were, you were telling, I was like, what have, what have you been up to? Um, what's changing in your world? What are you excited to talk about? And you had such a different perspective around voice. Uh, and so I was so excited to bring this conversation to the Well-Dressed Brand Tribe. And so my first question for you is when we think about the word influence, right? Um, dictionary gives us the description as a capacity to have have an effect on character development or behavior of someone or something or the effect of itself. It um, describes a voice as a particular opinion or attitude that's expressed. So as the founder of the Voice of Influence and the Voice of Influence podcast, what was it about those two words that you were able to brilliantly string together and give you this epiphany that this was something that you wanted to build a company around? Hmm. Well, at the time, I was really interested in trying to figure out how I could have some sort of impact. I mean, I'd just written this book. Um, I knew that, that self-expression was really important, not just to me, but to the world. I felt like people are beautiful and they have their own experiences, their own perspective, their own expertise. And then the rest of the world, like we all need each other. We need each other's perspective and expertise and the things that we can do to help each other out. And I felt like I was seeing a lot of, a lot of people that had things that they wanted to offer. And I saw a lot of need and a lot of disconnect on how how are these two things going to get connected how are we going to get people's expertise to the people that need them mm. and so that was kind of the driving force my um you know that just that idea of voice that, that kind of came from my own uh background as a singer as somebody who loved to get up and and sing in front of people but i didn't want to just sing to sing in front of people like i wanted to sing for a purpose like i wanted my voice to actually make a difference in somebody's life 
And that just translated, of course, later on to more of that difference making on a different level, you know, with a different, the, the more, the voice that you were talking about, um, that internal perspective and expertise that you're wanting to share. And so I, I knew that, that the concept of voice, the concept of influence were both really important. And as we were in that class together, that fascination advantage class, um, it started to kind of hit me like the, the way that Sally Hogsfield talks about and set up the, the um, system is that you have two different advantages, distinct advantages to your voice. Yeah. And those, when they come together and they blend, that's when it's most beautiful. That's when you're most impactful. And I thought those two concepts, voice and influence were the two things that I felt like were the most important things that I was trying to um, get out there or accomplish. And so I just started putting the words together and I was like, voice, voice, influence, voice, voice, voice of, voice of influence. Ooh, I like it. <laughs> so that's just kind of how it came. <laughs> yeah, I'm with you on that. You know, being a part of um, Sally Hogshead's um, Fascination Advantage Coaches in that meeting, you know, I think we went back to our hotel room when we were sharing our epiphanies and you were talking about that. And I had, that was the day that I was kind of like wardrobe as a business strategy. And, you know, Sally's like wardrobe is a business strategy. And I'm like, yes, you know, uh, so I, I love that. And thank you for answering that question um, so diligently, because that's a question that I, that I get asked all the time. It's like, how did you come up with this? And it's just like, you know, we're in a time where, um, of course, community is is really important. And um, that's not the word that I was looking for. But just kind of, you know, being able to have those kind of brainstorming sessions. Um, and, you know, we want to work well with each other. And I think that, you know, you describing that and coming up with is such a brilliant idea. And being able to um, be a leader within these other organizations or to help them to, to consult, to use their voice as an influence in their niche and like to do it on a bigger level with a company or a larger scale, and then also on a personal scale. And so as we were talking about that, um, this voice of influence, you leaned into something that I'm not that familiar with, and you were talking about personal agency. Can you explain what that means and how that relates to the voice of influence? Yeah, sure. So personal agency is, the way I describe it, it's essentially your your sense of being able to make a difference on your environment, on whatever, you're, wherever you are. So if I can have an impact on my work, if I can have an impact on um, where I'm at, then I feel like I can do more. I feel more, um, I feel like, oh, I, I, it matters that I'm here. So I do wanna take initiative. So I do want to share my ideas because my, even if they don't, even if we don't end up using my ideas, they've made some sort of impact. And so the, the concept of having a voice and having agency, I think are very similar. Um, having a voice, may, knowing that it matters and, and then it's the, um, it's the sense of, let's see, um, that my voice matters in this environment and with these people. And once I, once you kind of have that sense, then you, you just end up able to engage at a different level. And is that something that happens internally or is it kind of coaching or leadership that comes along aside of you and reminds you that your voice matters? Oh yeah. Um, so I, I think that it's really complicated you know i mean it's a whole matrix of things that make us feel like we can actually make a difference and actually we can make a difference um we have to have number one we have to have credibility we yeah. have to believe in our own credibility like i have a perspective and i'm and i and it's it's a credible perspective if i believe that then i'm going to be able to share it but if other people don't believe it that i have credibility then it won't make as big of a difference so my so other people believing that i have credibility is important and me believing that i have credibility is important so mm -hmm. credibility opportunity opportunity to actually share our voices and share our ideas 
that's incredibly important. Well, yeah. if a company doesn't provide opportunities for people to be able to share their ideas and their voices, or they sh- they they give they say they give opportunities, but nobody takes the opportunity because it's just to it's not safe. You know, it might not be safe to share your ideas because you might get trampled on, or you might, um, you know, you know that people are going to steal your ideas or that sort of thing. Like that's not a real opportunity. You know, like right. when companies or or organizations or you want to give somebody an opportunity to use their voice, then it has to be a real opportunity that they're willing to take. But that's the other piece of it. I have to decide that I'm going to take the opportunity. Yeah, I have to be willing to speak up and share my ideas and that sort of thing. And then the third, the third thing that we talk about when it comes to building your agency and, and helping other people build their agency is acknowledgement. Mm. So people need to be acknowledged for what they have brought to the table. Yes. So we're talking about, this is what you, this is what you said or did, and this is the difference that it made. Not just a, oh, good job. Here's your gold star. No, no. Let's tie it to the meaning or the impact. You Mm -hmm. need to be able to acknowledge that this person brought this idea to the table and this is the difference that that made. It changed the way that we talked about this. You know, our conversation changed once you brought that up. Thank you for saying that. Those are the two big basic pieces. But then again, you have to be able to, I have to be able to acknowledge that what I said mattered. Mm -hmm. Okay, then I see, I see that this is what I did or what I said, and this is how it mattered. So it's both. It's both. And I think it's these three main components, you know, credibility, opportunity, acknowledgement. When we can do those three things, I think it makes a huge difference in whether or not people believe that their voice matters. On a personal note, just thinking about you as an, an entrepreneur and for those of, of the new on, the entrepreneurs out there who are maybe new in business, um, something that you were saying made me think of this. What were some ways that you started to build your credibility, your own personal credibility, your own personal agency around your voice? Because as you were saying earlier, there was a time where, you know, that you lay out beautifully um, in your book, Unfrozen, uh, Stop Holding Back and Rele- Release and the Real You. Um, and, you know, like, how did you get to a, the point where you went from being unfrozen to this is my voice of influence and my personal agency um, and and be able to put that out there as an entrepreneur? Mm. This is such a good question, Toy. And I think this might be what we were talking about that you really... <laughs> We really cared about um because we both get tired of hearing about confidence oh, and you should just yeah. build your confidence <laughs> that was what it was Be more confident i'm like i don't need more confidence you don't know me if you think that i need more confidence right it's, it's not part. confidence it's not it, confidence it is credibility that's what yes. i need now yes yeah. confidence is good but everybody needs to understand the difference between the two and so yes credibility how did i build my credibility i will tell you this um i built it one freaking brick at a time Mm, yeah because i didn't have i had a master's degree but that's all i had and it really wasn't related to business at all it's Mm -hmm. a counseling ministries degree does it matter to what i do now oh yes it does but how am i supposed to say that people don't really care unless it actually makes a difference for them. Mm -hmm. So it became a question of, well, how am I gonna build my credibility? Let's start with this. Let's start with a podcast. Six years ago, I started a podcast and I brought on experts. I'm like, you know what? I'm gonna have conversations with experts and I'm gonna bring on people who, so in in a sense, I'm gonna borrow some credibility. I'm going to, and, and and, and that's okay. I knew that that was okay because as I get to hear and have conversations with these people, I am also getting better. I'm getting better and I'm getting smarter and I'm getting more articulate. And so starting the podcast was a really big piece for me because um, another thing that I was having a really hard time with was just expressing I had all these ideas inside, but I didn't know how to get them out in a way that made sense to other people. So doing the podcast and doing like episodes that I did, like, so 
um, sorry, the solo episodes is what I mean. Um, when I started to do the solo episodes too, it became, okay, Andrea, you have to do the discipline. You have to have the discipline to figure out what you're trying to say. Choose one thing to think about and talk about two or three things around that. Just get that much out. That's all you have to do. So I, I it was like, okay, I can get a little message out here. I can get a little message out there. And then I started to get better and better at it and build the sort of, um, I don't know, the body of work, like our friend Finca um, has <laughs> talked about, you know, yeah. that body of work that becomes, a, in a sense, its own credibility. But yeah. then it was working with people, getting results, working mm. with companies, getting results. Yeah. Once we could start to get results and we could point to what exactly those results were, then it became more and more um easy to explain what my credibility was. I didn't want to have to prove myself, but I knew I had to bring with me some results. People have yeah. to know whether or not they can trust you. Absolutely. Absolutely. Oh my gosh. I love that. I do remember now, you know, that our phone conversation and I was getting very passionate um, as I do around that word confidence um, for that reason. But I love, I want to go back to something that you said that was a fresh perspective for me um, this is why I love talking to you because you're one of the, like, I love talking to you because you make me think, and I, I always leave a conversation with you better. I always leave the conversation better. Um, you were talking about borrowed credibility and I love that in the scope of what we're talking about regarding confidence, um, and, you know, obviously personal agency and voice, um, and influence, but, that borrowed credibility, I think that no one, I've never heard anybody put it into terms like that, right? Because um, that's the other side of that confidence of like, well, I don't, I don't, I can't do it. You, I'm not confident. And you were saying like, well, don't focus on the fact that you are or are not confident. You know, what you're seeking again is you were saying credibility and you borrowed that credibility. Then you established that credibility. And then, you know, like all of these things, it makes, it reminds me of kind of what we talk about in the, with the well-dressed brand, right? That it's the alignment of <clears throat> your personality, what I heard you talking about were your core values, um, the things that were really important to you, um, your mission, your vision, your, you know, and then your image, of course, played a part in, in that as well, which we'll talk about in a little bit. Um, but I, when you say these things, I hear alignment, because I had this epiphany this morning, I was like, you know, thinking about confidence, it's a, it's a byproduct of alignment. And so what we're, I think, in 2023, what we're seeking um, with our voice of influence is wholeness, you mm. know, because that's going to bring us, you know, confidence mm. using, and then having that in alignment with everything that you just talked about, you know, I feel like that's where that leadership part comes in. Like you were saying, you know, that's where, um, <clears throat> You know, when, when we look at personal agency, it talks about our beliefs, our perceptions, our feelings, thoughts, preferences, choices, value, attitude, behavior, anything uh, which is going on within our minds that we do with our bodies. Well, that includes our voice. And that's why, in my opinion, what you're doing is 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 so brilliant and so different um, <clears throat> and such a fresh idea to bring to corporations in the way that you're helping them to communicate. Um, so my question to you is, how do you feel like your personal agency and your personal, um, and your voice <clears throat> had an impact, um, and what you're doing with the voice of influence when you're in front of these huge companies, you're working with massive clients, <clears throat> how does that Im impact you from a personal brand perspective or your branded image perspective? So, um, how does, how does it, okay. So I, I would say you're showing up. Yeah. Yeah. I, I mean, number one, I, I had to have a real clear sense of what my credibility was. Yeah. Uh, I think that became more and more clear as I took action. Mm. It is not something that I could figure out by just, which I love to do, just sit and think. <laughs> It was not happening by me just sitting and thinking or trying to get somebody else to tell me what it was. 
I did have help, but it was in the process of taking action. Yeah. So I had to actually, you know, offer the fascinate assessment to clients. You know, I had to actually put the offers out there, get, um, get a sense of like what, what I do that works. And, and, you know, sometimes it's not going to work and you're going to fail. And, you know, like there's all those little things like there you're, you know, that you're not at that high level yet, yeah. but you have to keep going and keep trying. I think that's something that I realized pretty early on. Like I, I care too much about this ultimate mission, my vision. Mm -hmm. I care too much about people and the difference that we need to make for each other to allow my ego to get in the way. Mm. Yeah, that's so good. I have to, I, 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 I kind of live by this motto, love people more than you fear them. Mm, so good. So oh. when I'm talking to whoever I'm talking to, I try to remember that because it certainly helps me. Like, this is not about me getting something from this relationship. Yeah. Although I'm ready to receive and I know that I, I benefit from other people. Of course. But it's also about me showing up in love. Yeah. And caring more about the, the mission, the vision, than whether or not I'm going to fail at it mm -hmm. and whether or not I might make a mistake along the way or somebody sees the soft underbelly of Andrea Wimberg, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, like that's gonna happen. I have to be okay with that. Yeah. So anyway, that's a piece of it for sure. And then the other piece of that, I think is probably along more along the lines of how am I going to show up, which is probably something else you want to talk about. Yeah. I mean, I want to get to, I want to, I'm going to go back a little bit. Um, yep. Because my next question is really about the healthy versus the healthy versus unhealthy around it, but I want to make sure that. Um, so, for those of you who are are watching and you um, were very kind and picked up my book, that you noticed that there is an entire section about Andrea Weinberg, <laughs> and so I had the pleasure, um, you know, to dress her, um, and often I do for many occasions. Um, you know, I have a lot of client friends, uh, and I appreciate them. And so when we were talking, as I'm listening to you and we were talking about this influence, right? Because there's so much about influence that people also entertained with presence. And then they, you know, throw out their executive presence, right? Um, <clears throat> and then going into your physical voice, like, you know, verbal not, you know, the cues, the tones, like all of those things. And so when you considered, you know, the things, your, your alignment, right, mission, vision, and and your image, um, and the way that you sat with it, clarified it, was so clear on your mission and your vision, excuse me. How did that impact the way you want it to show up in the way you got dressed? Yeah. That's what I'm asking. Yeah. Um, so I had a style that was very wallflowery. <laughs> <laughs> I was definitely wallflower Andrea. Um, I didn't want to stand out. I mean, from a young age, I didn't want to stand out with my appearance because I was afraid of what that would mean. I was, I didn't want to be taken advantage of for that. I didn't want to be, I didn't want to be objectified, you know, like I had a lot of like internal pushback on that idea mm -hmm. of like trying to dress up for people. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. and then as I got going and I realized that I also didn't like the idea of sales, I didn't want to be salesy or whatever. Well, guess what? <laughs> if you want, if you have a message you want to get out into the world, you're going to have to swallow some of that pride and do the sales and do the, you know, showing up in a way that is authentic to your brand. Yes. And what I think I realized when with you was that my, my fascinate assessment, um, my archetype is the maverick leader. So innovation and power. Yeah. And then here I was trying to be a wallflower with my appearance it made no you're sense. like no girl <laughs> it didn't make any sense right 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 it does not work like that you yeah. can't you have to be authentic like like you were saying i think being true to yourself the alignment yeah 
that I wasn't, I, my outside wasn't aligned with my inside yeah. and what I was producing. So yeah. I needed to align my outside better with who I was on the inside. And, and that's what, I, I think that's when it made so much more sense to me. Like, oh no, I'm not being authentic. Yeah. And thank you for sharing that because I know there's somebody watching and that's just, you know, still there's, there's visibility, visibility coaches for a reason, right? There's all these streaming coaches for a reason um, because people have our, you know, that's difficult. There's sales coaches for a reason because they're like, oh my goodness, I can't, like you said, I can't do this. I can't, you know? And so, and then again, that whole push of confidence, confidence, confidence. And I just love our conversation because it's like, that's a byproduct of all of these exceptional things. And then when you show up, you're showing up whole and fully aligned and your voice can be heard in so many different ways, mm. you know? And so that's what, like the other thing that I love about what you're doing, because it's just, it's this double edged sword in the best way of voice. Mm. Love it. I love it. You know, Toy. I, one thing that came to mind when you were talking about that was just, I think that one of the things that I wanted to do was I wanted to get out of my own way. Mm. I needed to get out of the way of the message. Wow. And by being a wallflower, I was in the way of the message. Mm. Like, and instead what I did by, by coming to you and, and getting help with that was I was not only aligning, but then it was more amplifying that message too. Yes. Because yeah. things were in alignment, therefore it could go out even, even better. And I really think that that's a, one of the key things that you do, um, is to help people not just be authentic, but then that authenticity ends up amplifying their voice without saying a word, you know? And so that's why I'm saying it's multifaceted what you're doing, right? Because yeah. You know, you're, you, but, you know, I always talk about you step on stage, you hit that Zoom cam for the first time, you know, your branded image is going to speak of volumes way before you do. But I love what you're saying when you're like, you know what, there's a responsibility that comes with this, you know, on the other side, before you even get to dressing it, you know, you're like, how are we going to talk about it? How are we going to communicate it? How is it amplified? How are you living it, so to speak, you know, because I really do think that we're in this time you know, where, where it's a time to stop talking about it and you have to start living it. Yes. And so, you know, and it's hard to live from an, a place that's not credible. Yes. You know, um, can you have an unhealthy voice of influence? Absolutely. And um, I mean, I would like to distinguish having a voice of influence as being healthy in the first place. Yeah. Like I would like to make that be the, the norm, <laughs> but, but the fact of the matter is we have, we can be healthy or unhealthy in the way that we influence Yeah, and, um, unhealthy. It has, it, it takes away people's options. It takes away people's choice. It ignores people's voice. It pushes down and, it shuts people up it um shames and it brings in fear and and that is unhealthy and a lot of times in an authoritarian kind of leadership style mm. where you feel like you know what i need to people need to do what i ask them to do yeah then you end up using unhealthy methods to instead of respecting the humanity of the people that are right there with you, mm. respecting their humanity, their voice, their ability to choose. And when people end up choosing to do what you said or suggested, instead of doing what you said because you, you made them do it, when yeah. they choose, they are way more engaged. <laughs> yes. yes. I mean, look at our kids. A hundred percent. Our kids. Yeah. Yeah. You, the kids don't always get a choice. Let's, let's be real. You can't always right. give them choices. And, and you know what, sometimes you just have to lay things out and say, look, this is what we need to do. And here are the consequences. If we don't do them, that's yeah. okay. Give people those options because then when they choose, they're going to be more, more in it to win it. I love that. That is a beautiful segue into my final question. 
which is how do you um, teach your children about or be an example of, you can answer either one of those, uh, of having a voice of influence as the mom of two teenagers. <laughs> I'm barely surviving with one. Um, how do you how do you start to kind of um, teach these concepts to them? You know what? The further into parenting I get, the more I feel like I am screwing it up and don't know. Um, <laughs> they're great <Yeah>. kids. <laughs> they're great kids. But at the same time, you, 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 you know, you're, you're always wondering, you're always wondering what, am I doing it the right way? I don't know. I think I'm hoping that eventually once they get a chance to, to grow and mature even more, it's going to, it's going to come out probably even more later. Yeah. Um, but for me, when it comes to, and for us, when it comes to giving our kids choices, we have to figure out number one, what can they have a dis can they have a choice about and what do they not get a choice about and then um what and not only that but what what are the reasons you know helping them understand i mean, remember recently um one of my kids didn't want to come with us on some little day trip and i said you know that would be really disappointing yeah. because X, Y, and Z, and we really want to make this person feel loved who was going to be with us that day. We would, we'd, I just want them to feel loved. And it just like changed their perspective from thinking about themselves and what they were going to miss out on on that day yeah. to be able to see that they were, there was a purpose be behind this mm -hmm. decision um, to go on to do this day trip. And and I was like, I know that you're not going to throw a fit like you might have when you were three. But right. I, I hope that you're actually in it and, and you're, you know, in, in, in it with us and this desire to make this person feel loved and yeah, and it worked. And I think sometimes just explaining it, you know, like this is, this is what's going on behind the scenes. Like, this is the reason, um, it, a lot of times they just need to understand they don't get it. Yeah. Or they're, they're so worried about themselves and the things that are going on in their lives. It's really hard for them to see beyond themselves. So just helping them to be able to see beyond themselves, yeah. um, sometimes makes a difference too. giving yeah. them choices every single time we can. So that when, when there's a point where we really want them to just comply, <laughs> we can right. be like, Hey, look, I really right. need you to just do this. Absolutely. And it's not a fight hopefully at that point. Right. No, I think that, I think that that's right. And I think that, you know, for us with just, you know, with, with Tucker being the only child, it gets to be a little bit of a challenge because, you know, he doesn't often have to consider anybody else except for us, yeah. you know? And so um, I think that those are great. You know, we talk a lot um, about leadership in our, our home with him. I mean, my husband's a Marine, so of course, there's going to be a lot of talk around leadership, um, you know, and he's an excellent leader. And so uh, both in and outside of the home. So, you know, you just, you know, we have those kind of conversations of his influence and how it impacts um, his classmates, how it impacts his teachers, how it impacts, you know, that Nick, he has a voice in that to your point. Um, and, you know, how are you using that? You know, are you getting closer to your goals or, or are you going, getting further away, you know, in every decision, you know, mm. so. And some kids can't even think beyond today, but if you right. can just <laughs> have those conversations around what they're actually experiencing in the moment, yeah. you know, this is how, this is a way to think about this one. Yeah. <laughs> That's about all I got sometimes. I know you don't want to want the whole like dissertation oh, oh of gosh. leadership with me right yeah. now, but I would right. like to give you this one little tip. Right. Insert eye roll. <laughs> yeah. And it's <sighs> our whole lives right now is the deep sigh and the eye rolls. All right. Well, friend, thank you so much for um, just being such a delight always, but just educating us today and um, giving us a different, pers a fresh perspective, a different perspective around voice, around influence, around leadership, and around how we show up. Um, I think that um, this is going to help so many people, and I cannot wait to read and see all the comments around this conversation because I'm on fire for it already. 
And so I thank you so much for your time. Thank you for saying yes. And um, I look forward to us scheduling uh, some sort of uh, trip back to Disney sometime soon. <laughs> yeah, I think that's right. Well, thank you so much for having me, Toy. And thank you for your voice of influence in the world. We really appreciate it. Love you. <laughs> Bye.